Hey guys, so we're going to be building out the resolver for the listing today, so we were able to actually create some of these. And before we do though, I just want to add one quick field, and that is category. So this is something I forgot to add, but I want this to represent if this listing is, for example, an apartment or a house or etc. Kind of like what it is that's being uh, listed. Uh, and now we're ready to go ahead and get started. So. Whenever we create new GraphQL resolver stuff, I have it so we put it in the result or the modules folder. And right now we have a user folder. I'm gonna create a new one called listing. So I guess right now it's kind of mapping user, user, listing, listing with our entities right now. Um, and I'm gonna create a new folder in here just called create. And I'm gonna create a schema.graphql in here. So here I'm gonna specify the actual mutation type so I'm going to say type mutation, and we can close this. And I'm going to say create listing. So now we need to take some parameters here. I'm just going to call this input, and we're going to create a type up here. So input, and we're going to say create listing input. So I'm going to put all the fields that we need to actually enter in this input uh, type up here and so I'm going to say create listing input and we're just going to return a boolean for now true or false and I'll just say whether or not the create listing worked so if, if you're newer to GraphQL you may not have seen of this input before so you may have just seen like types so type mutation type that but we want to use this um, as an argument to this mutation and whenever you want to use it as an argument it has to be an input so that's why I have the word input there and I'm just gonna copy all this stuff here because it's roughly going to match so we're gonna have an ID now normally I have in the past made the ID a string uh, but this is actually just a straight mistake a new mistake on my part actually and the reason for that is Apollo has a special type for the ID and that is called ID like that and uh, it's a special type that allows you to automatically update um, when you're doing mutations and stuff on the client side uh, I'll point this out when we actually do it uh, this probably won't make any sense now but you can just think of what this ID is is it's a special type that allows you or allows Apollo to do some things on the front end so it's important to add that for the ID all right, so we have the name that is going to be a string. Uh, same with the category. Uh, picture URL. So I'm taking all these fields in. Uh, for now, I'm going to say I'm not going to take the picture URL as in just a string here. Um, I'm not quite sure how I want to handle the picture right now, so I'm just going to leave that off. Uh, and we're going to come to that in a little bit. Description, string. Uh, price and this is going to be a float or I guess not a float an int and same with beds guests as well and then the latitude and longitude will be floats And I'm putting the exclamation mark at the end. That means it's a required field. Um, and all right, so we want uh, an array of strings. Now the syntax for uh, an array of strings in GraphQL is slightly different than in TypeScript. So it's like that. I always get it confused when I'm switching back and forth. Uh, but it's like that. And I'm going to say a uh, required in there. So this means uh, that, and I'm also going to say required here. So they have to pass. Um, amenities and you can't have an array of null values. Um, lastly is this user here. Now we're not actually going to pass the user ID in as an input because then you could basically uh, put any user you wanted to create for this listing. That doesn't make sense. What it should look for is the cookie. Look for the person who is making the request and then use that person's user ID. So we don't actually need to specify that in the input itself. Alright, so this looks pretty good for our input here. 
So now I'm gonna come over here and create a new file in the same folder called resolvers. And I'm gonna say export const resolvers. And it's gonna be a resolver map. And the pathing is way off. I'm just gonna copy what we have in the user because it's gonna be the same thing. Um, so copy that and paste it here. And this is the setup that I used uh, for all the user stuff. So I would have a schema.graphql and a full file called resolvers.ts. You wanna make sure in the name matches. The reason for that is we have a util over here called generate schema. And what it does is it looks inside of this folder um, for something called resolvers. So make sure you have name it resolvers. Now I called it schema.graphql, you can call it something else if you want to. All right, so in here I'm gonna say mutation and we're gonna create this uh, create listing. And it's going to be a function. And so the first argument is gonna be the parent, we don't care about that. The second is going to be the arguments, which is gonna be our input. And third is our context. Our context is gonna have this session. We care about that because that's where our user ID is located. Um, and so here I'm just gonna say uh, await. I'm gonna say listing.create. And I'm gonna make this an async function. And then we're gonna save it. And I'm gonna say return true. And now inside of create, we're going to put all the values. I'm gonna say dot 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 input and all the names line up exactly there's no real changes that we need to make to these right here uh, they can just go directly into the database um, and let's see is there any other fields I don't think there's any other fields that we need to add except for the picture URL which I didn't add and the user ID so the, for the picture URL for now I'm going to just leave this as an empty string. In the future, what we want to do is actually take an image and create a URL. And then we want to get the user ID. So I'm gonna say user ID. Uh, and this is another reason why, if you come over here to listing, why I added this column over here called user ID. So when we're creating it, we can actually specify the user ID. Um, and I'm gonna say session dot user ID. And uh, session has this user ID, so this was stored in the session. Uh, if we take a look at our login, so here's our login resolver. When we log in at the bottom here, what we do is we say session.userid. And so now we are saving that person's user ID that they logged in with. And so whenever they make a request, it's stored in, the, uh, in our database, or in this case we're using Redis and uh, we match up the person's cookie to the data we have stored for them uh, and the data we have stored is just the user ID right now. Uh, if you wanted to you can also console log the session and see what the value is so that's kind of interesting so we can do that if you want to and you'll see one of the values is the user ID. So I already have my server up and started I want to go ahead and uh, call this mutation and see if it works. Uh, Okay, so I have that up and running, and I'm over here on low close 4000. That's where my server is. So now before we can do anything, we have to log in. Again, because we need to be able to know who the user is and have that session. So right now, here's my application. I don't have any cookies set. Uh, if you just try logging in, most likely um, it'll work, assuming you have a user that you've already signed up with and confirmed their email and whatnot. Uh, but a cookie will not get set. And the reason for that is you have to actually go into the settings and change something. So by default, there's a setting called request credentials. Uh, if you don't have this here, you can just add it in. And it's omit. So we need to call it include and save it. So by default, it basically gets rid of that cookie. But if we say include, it'll include the cookie. So if I come back over here and run this login mutation again, we can see it worked okay, and now we can see a QID popped up, so it actually added a cookie. Um, and now if we wanted to, I could actually call a mutation, for example, like me, and we can actually see who my user is, right? So this is the same email that I just logged in with over here. And it knew who I was based on the cookie, right? Because I didn't pass any parameters in here. 
So the same logic occurs when we're about to now type out our new mutation that we just created. So I'm going to call create listing. And it doesn't look like uh, the values here yet. So uh, whenever this is the case, you just have to usually refresh. So I'm going to say create listing now. And I'm going to say input. And now we're going to put all our values uh, in. So there's a whole bunch of them. I think the easiest way, if I just copy that. Oh, you know what? I uh, copied it with a bin. There we go. And now we can, I guess, type out some of these values. Oh, I don't know why I said input. Uh, okay, so this is silly. I said the ID here. Um, we don't actually, we don't actually input the ID. We're going to be doing this when we create the listing type. So forget what I was talking about with this. Uh, whenever we create a type called listing that is going to have an ID like so. We haven't created this yet, but we will in the future. Uh, I'll just leave this. Um, we'll come back to it, but we don't actually need an ID when creating this. Uh, it's going to be auto-generated for us. All right, so name, category, description, price, um, beds, guess, latitude, longitude, amenities, um, I'm just going to say, you know, you know what, why not? We can put it some string values. Um, and I, I think that's all it needs. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Uh, oh, expected an ID. So I, I changed that. So I changed it over here. It uh, still wants me to add an ID over here. Again, maybe if I do this, I don't have to refresh. Nope, looks like I still have to refresh. Um, oh, it still wants an ID. This is odd. So it looks like it's still asking for me an, an ID, expected ID found null. Uh, even though I removed it over here, uh, I don't think this is causing an issue. Oh, you know what? So I'm currently editing a GraphQL file, right? Uh, I saved it. I was expecting my server to automatically restart, but uh, no daemon doesn't actually check uh, GraphQL files, I guess, by default. So I'm going to have to manually restart it. Um, and then I think I can just click this instead of restarting uh, to get it to refresh and to know that the ID is no longer needed in the schema. There we go. Cool. All right. So now I can try creating this. Um, and it was able to create it. OK. Now we can see if there's any errors or anything on our side. Looks like it was able to insert it OK. And here we can see here's the session. So there's a cookie associated with it. And then here's that data value that we saved when the user logged in. So here's that uh, ID of the user. And uh, we were able to create uh, an item here. Awesome. So now this is it for at least this video. What I want to do in the next one is kind of add some, some logic to this. Because we don't want just anyone adding a, a listing right we want them to be logged in before they do so let's say I'm not logged in here so I just cleared my token cleared my cookie and I tried doing this again we just get an error like sorry you can't have a null value for user ID uh, instead really what we want to do is like throw an error like hey you haven't logged in right so we're gonna add some logic like that to this resolver so that's it for this video guys I'll see you in the next one